Hey what's up guys, OSG back with another comparison video and today it's the turn of the Sega classic Golden Axe. I'm sure that most people watching will have played this game at some time or another as it was massive in the arcades and in the home systems even though some of them weren't that great. It was a game that me and my mates loved playing and was a real bargain for your 10 pence as in playing together we could almost one credit this. It was released on 11 home systems and for once even though some are not great there are no terrible unplayable games on this list. As usual I've played them all and matched the gameplay to the arcade to make it easier for you to see the comparison. So without more delay let's take a look at Golden Axe comparison in order of greatness. Kicking us off in 11 place we have the Spectrum version. So this one is a shame as the gameplay is fast but the sound effects aren't great and after that intro music I feel that an in game tune would have really benefited this game. The sprite box really annoys me on this version too and when I say fast maybe it's a bit too fast. Tenth place is taken by the Amstrad CPC. Much better looking than the Spectrum with grey colours but again there is no in game music and the sound effects are horrible. I also think the gameplay is a bit broken up by the inability to move for what seems like an eternity when you take a hit and unless you've got a creature to ride on it's more of a dash barge -a than anything else. The Commodore 64 is in 9th position, so this version takes the Commodore does brown colours to a whole new level as that palette is awful. But this one does have a choice between music and sound effects and I feel that it really makes a difference. But there is an issue with this version, unlike the previous two this is only one player which lets it down. And it's a shame because brown colours aside this is pretty good and I enjoyed it as a kid. In 8th place we have the Wonderswan Colour. Ok so this is a system we don't see often but it's quite a neat little handheld system and the only handheld that got a Golden Axe port. Yeah, it's a bit weird that Game Gear didn't get a version of this. Anyway, this is a quality little game. It plays really well and for a relatively unknown system has made me want to explore its catalogue more. Seventh place is taken by the MS-DOS version. Looks wise this is brilliant and I wanted to like it more so I went back and had another game as originally I had it in 8th place but the frame rate is abysmal and although the soundtrack is ok the sound effects are amongst the worst I've heard. Now maybe someone can tell me if that's down to emulation but for me it spoils a great game and that's a shame. Sega Master System is in 6th position, so as expected this was translated from arcade to Sega's 8 bit system and as with the majority of Sega games they did a really great job. This is definitely the most playable game on the list so far and for an 8 bit it's brilliant. I remember when I owned my Master System thinking it was inferior to the NES but the more I do comparisons the more I realise I didn't understand what a gem of a system I had. Thank you. 
In fifth place we have the Atari ST. This game would have been higher if the playing window had been bigger. Most YouTube videos have cut the borders out and made this look like full screen, but it's not and it somewhat spoils it. Other than that, it's a brilliant version of a game with good sound and graphics and utilises the one button control method perfectly. Fourth place is taken by the PC Engine CD. I had high hopes for this version when I fired it up. PC Engine has a great track record when it comes to arcade parts, but, and in no way does this mean it's a bad game, it's all a bit underwhelming after I built my hopes up. The graphics are okay and so are the sound effects, but it doesn't have the wow factor that we got with the likes of R-Type and Goose and Ghosts to name a few. The music though is nice and you still get a great Golden Axe experience. Commodore Amiga is in third position. Now this is a brilliant arcade part for the Amiga. As with the Atari ST, they got the one button controls spot on and you were able to pull off all the moves. The game looks almost as good as the arcade and the music is awesome. The sound effects in this game actually sound the same as the arcade too. This was a game that you would come home from the arcades and play and be more than satisfied with. In second place we have the Sega Mega Drive version. This was a game that I got with my Mega Drive on the Mega Games 2 compilation, alongside the Revenge of Shinobi and Streets of Rage. What a lineup that was. This was a game that I thought would have been top of this list, as it's a game that I hammered back in the day, and to me, it was no different to the arcade, although side by side you can see the difference. It's still a truly great arcade part for the Mega Drive though. And now, in first place we have the Mega CD version. This came as part of the Sega Classics Arcade Collection compilation, and it's got everything that the Mega Drive version has, but it's crisper looking and the gameplay flows slightly better, and I mean slightly. I'm just nitpicking though, because I need to separate them, but then comes the true reason for this being top, and that's the soundtrack, which I actually think it outdoes the arcade and the Amiga, it's so good. Okay that's it for this comparison, it's been a truly enjoyable one for me as all these versions were very playable unlike some of the comparisons I do. Please let me know in the comments below what your favourite version of Golden Axe is and if you haven't already please remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more great retro content. Also if you want to join the ever growing Patreons that you can see going up the screen right now, get on over to my Patreon channel where you can pledge for as little as $1 that will get your name in the end credits, video requests and more in the future. Till next time this is OSG, signing out.